Good morning to you. It must be 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time somewhere out there because it's time for another edition of Hardison Tips. I'm your host, Brandon Hardison, on this beautiful second day of August of 2021. Monday morning, ready to get up, and let's get this month going. We do this for all of our brothers and sisters that are in the automotive space, uh, up and down the street, major account, key account, retail. We just want to give you some things to think about as you're getting dressed and heading out. So let's get to it. Today, we want to look at all of the salespeople and ask if you're listening. I mean, actively listening to what the person on the other side of the couch or the desk, or if it's a Zoom call or a phone call, what are they saying? Salespeople, from hearing from sales managers, they don't listen. They leave so many things out. And as a manager, I have to do more follow-up, and that takes time if we want to close the deal. So today, let's look at active listening, because it's one of the most important skills in a salesperson's toolbox. Unfortunately, it is often overlooked and undervalued in this entire sales process. So what is the result we expect? Sales that should be easy are made difficult. Sales efforts that can only lead to frustration for the sales consultant and the prospect. It continues toward an inevitable dead end. And even when the sales are made, the solution sold may be off target, causing the customer's dissatisfaction and a damaged relationship is now in place for you, the salesperson, and your organization. By using effective listening skill techniques, however, sales that might have been difficult became easier, dead-end prospects get weeded out earlier, and closed deals truly solve customers' problems and ensure customer satisfaction and loyalty. So let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's unpack this a little bit more as we go to a head dive. What can we offer this morning as a solution for you to think about so you can sell more? Too often, salespeople launch into a standard sales pitch and listen later after the pitch when it's already too late. This is a classic case of selling instead of solving or pursuing or pigeonholing a prospect to what their pain, what they need is a solution to overcome that pain. So when a salesperson doesn't listen first, active listening, it sends these unfortunate messages to any potential customer that solving their true needs or curing their real pain doesn't really matter. Or their needs are not unique and therefore their account won't be managed based on its individual merit. Or the salesperson wants to make the sale as quickly as possible and move on to the next conquest, if you will. The salesperson needs to exceed the prospect's customer needs. This customer presentation, presentation is very like reality. And if it creates tension between the salesperson and the prospect, leading to wasted time effort for both parties. If the inevitable way that we want to get a sales going through our sales process, we need to look at this in a different scheme. How 
I am in there and up front will tell the guest that I'm here to listen to your needs. If this is not a place where we can have total privacy, do you have a conference room instead of your office? Hey, you know, Mr. Customer, based on my experience, there's a lot of interruptions going on. I really would like to hear what's going on with your particular situation. Is there another room? Are we going to be bothered? That sends a different signal out instead of you just going right into your pitch. See, the benefits of active listening on paper, in reality, when a salesperson utilizes active listening techniques, both parties benefit in several ways. The prospect feels heard, respected, valued because you were listening to them. The prospect may offer fewer and softer objections if the emphasis is on their need to solve a problem rather than the salesperson need to make a sale. The prospect will always have greater confidence in the solution that you're going to present to them because they know you are listening and you really were addressing their needs. Now, the key thing about it, at the end of your Q&A, make sure that we recap. Mr. Customer, Ms. Customer, thank you for the time. I think I have a better idea, but let me make sure I'm having a good Monday. You said, you said, walk them down what the conversation was about. And I guarantee you, this part of that presentation sit with that customer will be a lot more effective. Now, we'll pick it up tomorrow with part two. But in the meantime, as always in parting, this is Brandon Hardison, President of Champion Strategies, with another Hardison's tip on this beautiful Monday, August the 2nd. And as always in parting, you go out and you make it a champion day.